Floyd and I had the Gideons in common. I was in the Gideons for a long time before I become a pastor. I always, every time we had time for Gideon Sunday, I said, Lord, you know how it goes. Just handle everything. Tell me what you want to do. Missions, missionaries, they were always opening their doors up. Uh, the people from Israel that I stay with, they let Ruth stay with them. Missionaries from the Philippines, all the church activities. You know, I didn't know he was involved in local theater but he sure loved doing the Christmas play at our church. I don't know if you've seen the picture out here with him wearing the wig. That came from our church play. He came out <laughs> trying to speak redneck. <laughs> and there was a part that he added in the play when they did the play, and they were talking about a flight on an airplane during the play, and it's like, what is crazy with these people's security? What do people do? Why can't you have a letter opener? Who has a letter opener in their bag? Well, Lloyd has his bag with him. Up, and he says, well, I got one. He added that into the play. They constantly served others. I can't tell you how many times that Lloyd and Ellie traveled and did things for me because of being a bivocational pastor that I couldn't cover. Seeing people, going to people, being at the hospitals during the day and times and places. I'm, Ellie, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. I, my, my heart goes out to this family. But I tell you what, you should be very well pleased that you had this man in your life. Few people have a quality of men, and this world needs godly, manly men today in it. I used to love to tell the stories about Lloyd growing up. Somebody said climbing trees. I love the story where he climbed the barn so his father wouldn't give him a spanking. He showed me a picture of the barn with that little coop on top. Yeah. Ellie's story in China is remarkable. I always love telling about that. Learned more about that with her and her sister yesterday. Of course, standing on his head everywhere he went. And about their many experiences serving the Lord. And you guys are right. When they get there, they're plugged in. They're plugged in. They're doing what they can for God. I'm one of these people who cherish things. I cherish uh, like a sentimental gift. He gave me the book after he searched for months and months and months so he could find it in English of your grandfather, Daniel E. Mast, Salvation Full and Free. I love that book. I love his fedora. He told me he bought his fedora about the year I was born. It scared me to death when he'd sit on a pew. I was afraid one of the kids would sit on it. Now, about bringing this today, Lloyd was intrigued with my iPad when I first got it. I said, you should get one. It's easier to read with. I do a lot of studying on mine. I do a lot of my research on my iPad because it's brighter, and as you said, the letters can get bigger, and we can see all that. And he got one, and what was funny is, is my son at the time was 13 and just got one, and he and Lloyd sat down together and set his up. What a wonderful story that he did. He did things like on Bryson at our church's 3,000th day birthday, got him a birthday card. Uh, Lloyd and I hit it off from the start. What you don't realize is you're probably, the Mass family is more German than I am, but not by much. And we shared our heritage and our lineage a lot more we come. The Hedricks and the Kuntz that come out of Germany back in the early 1700s were, were my family, and they settled in Pennsylvania and then eventually ended up in North Carolina. I love Lloyd for his intellect, his love for science and technology. We had many things. My background is in science. Lloyd was probably my best Hebrew student. Come to my Hebrew classes that we taught. He would tickle me so much because this is a southern saying that we would always say in the south, do you see what I'm saying?
and he, he struggled with that. He said, so you use like a, a blimp, like a cartoon? And we said, that's exactly it. So then he started saying it all the time. Wednesday night, we started off church memorializing Lloyd. We all shared those things like you said, and we, we did that, speaking of him. As Paul Harvey says, this is the rest of the story. I want to tell you right here, right now, exactly what Lloyd would want you to know today. As he stands and he sees his eternal life right now, is give your life to God. Give your life to God because nothing else matters than your total dedication to the God in heaven. When you do that, everything else falls in place. Everything that you have chased in your life that's been self-centered, you think that will satisfy you when you give it all to God, God will give you greater satisfaction than you ever thought than you would ever know. Lloyd and I were very similar. We're kind of can-do people. We do things with our hands. I'm not afraid to accomplish any task, whether it be anything from plumbing to laying tile to working outside, whatever. God knows you just like that Lloyd and I know how to build a few things. And the Creator knows the creature better than the creature knows himself. And he knows what will bring you more joy and more fulfillment than life. And that is total giving yourself to God. This is the verse that I would share with you today that Lord Lloyd wants you to share. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That's how Lloyd lived his life. That's what I saw when I saw Lloyd. Give your life to God. If you don't know him, you need to. There are three types of people sitting in this building today. Those who are lost. Those are out of the will of God, and those are in God's will. Can I be very frank with you? Life is not like ivory soap. Ivory soap says it's 99 and 44 one hundred percent pure, right? I thought in my life when I held back the other 56 one hundredths that I was still following God. I did not get satisfaction until I fell completely in love with my Savior. This is the reason that Lloyd and Ellie, everywhere that they went, they got plugged in so fast and they met people and you knew who they were from the beginning because they were totally sold out to God. This is the reason they were happy. This is the reason that I know many stories about many of your lives because they would brag on you. Matthew says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Lloyd found his life. Right here, right now, again, I say unto you, give yourself to God fully, wholly, and completely. Take yourself and imagine if you are where Lloyd is right now, what is the most important thing that you could say to anybody on this side of eternity? Give your life to God. I know that he would want you to, to do that. Lloyd, he was... I can't tell you how, I could sit here all day and tell you how special he is to me, and I could not tell you enough. My trip has been a pure joy to come up here, even going through the blizzard. Coming out of Buffalo, the people I've met, I got to talking to, the, talking to the, one of the stewardess about God. We just stood in the back, she and I, talking about God, and I was talking about where I was coming and all that, and, and she took and upgraded my flight for me for the next trip from LaGuardia to Buffalo. God's people have a connection. Guys, I want to tell you again, Ellie, I love you with all my heart, all the hard work that you and Lloyd done in our church. We never go to church, even in the months that you guys moved up here. 
that you two are not spoken about? You guys, the kids, you're blessed. The grandkids, you're blessed. No more than you can do than to honor yourself is to give your life wholly and completely to God would honor his life even more because Lloyd was the kind of man that I saw who led by example. Now, I believe that we are going to sing it as well with my soul. Is that true? I want you to go ahead and stand, and we're going to do something. I do this in honor of Lloyd because he loved it. Please stand for me just for a second, because I'm sure that we'll stand and sing, and I'll turn it over to Dean. And I thank you again. I'm so thankful I've got to meet every each and every one of you. Um, I've done I've done some revivals up north, and I think they call me just so they can hear me talk. <laughs> but I did notice in the song a minute ago, y'all do speak a little southern because fire is one syllable, and you guys were singing it, fire. Listen, the other thing that we enjoyed at our church that Lloyd did too, when you leave this place, when we dismiss today, I want you to turn to somebody, not just shake their hand, but hug their neck and tell them that you love them. That's what God's all about. Lloyd loved others. And he loved me. I don't understand why sometimes, but he did. But every time I would dismiss, dismiss church, I would do this, and I do this because you could just see, as Ken said, you could see a tear coming down his eye when we'd do that. I'd like for you to bow your head and, and, and close your eyes and hold your hands out, and we're going to receive the blessing. I'm going to do it in Hebrew, and then we will do it in English. Bow your heads, please. Hold your hands out and receive the blessing from God. Yevrekeka Adonai ve Yishmareka, Yarira Dana Panabi Leka Vekuneka, Yisarana Pana Ileka Ve Yasim Leka Shalom. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to stand. Thank you for the life that he lived, that Lloyd Mass lived in front of me. Thank you for Sister Ellie and the family, and I pray, God, you'd bless them, dear God, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, dear God. And, Lord, we thank you. We love you. And, Lord, we love your son, and thank you for what he did on Calvary. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we do pray, and let all the people say, Amen.